In this video, I'm gonna share some photography and Photoshop tips to help you get amazing black and white photos. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. Here's your host, Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. Now today I've come out into the countryside, it's a beautiful sunny day and I'm going to be taking photographs in black and white. So this video is all about seeing in black and white and a few hints and tips for seeing black and white in the landscape. Okay, so I've got a nice scene in front of me here, let's just uh, take a picture and we'll have a little look. And that looks really nice, I, I like the idea but is it going to be a good black and white? Well, when you're shooting in black and white, there's a few little things you should look for. They include contrast. And seeing contrast can be quite challenging if you're new to black and white. Here, we've got the, the greens and the blues. So we've got a contrasting color between the sky and well, everything else here because it's a, a beautiful green location. And those two colors will really look different in black and white. And that's the sort of thing we're looking for, contrast in color or contrast in lighting. Today is a nice sunny day, so we've got a nice contrast between the lights and the shades, and those things in black and white really make or break a great black and white image. So if you're having trouble seeing in black and white, here's a great tip. Go into your camera's menu and do something that I recommend that you normally never do. I'm gonna turn on the picture mode, and I'm gonna turn it into monochromatic, black and white. All cameras have got that kind of scene, and it's called different things in different cameras. So why do I normally not recommend it? Well, if you're shooting in JPEG, that's all you're gonna get, a black and white. And that's really not the best way to make a black and white image. However, you're all shooting in RAW, hopefully. And if you're a RAW shooter, you get the chance to change the black and white image back in your computer. It'll open up in Photoshop as color, regardless of what setting you have on the camera. But by putting your camera into the black and white mode and taking a picture, what you get on the back of the camera is a black and white image. And that helps you to see the black and white picture much better, to get an idea of whether this is gonna make a great black and white or not. After a while, you'll start to get a feel for these things and you'll start taking better and better pictures. So let's get another one of these and then we'll go off and find another place to shoot. Now, if you've got a lovely blue sky like I've got today, here's a really, really good tip. And that is to use a polarizing filter. Circular polarizing filter is the must have filter. All photographers should have one of these. They do all sorts of useful things. They reduce reflection from, from shiny surfaces. They slow down your shutter speed a little bit, but today they're gonna to make the blues bluer, the yellows yellower. It's gonna make all the colors much more punchy. And the reason that that's a good thing is when I get my image back into the computer, those punchy colors just give me a lot more chance to, to pull up or mute down the tones for those particular colors. So I'm just gonna add my polarizing filter to the front of my camera. So with the filter attached to the front of the camera, using a polarizing filter is really straightforward. All you need to do is look through the viewfinder, rotate the filter around, and when you see the scene get darker, particularly the blue skies get dark blue, that's when you know your filter is in exactly the right position. So finally, one other thing about shooting in black and white. There's no color in the picture to make your images pop and to be eye-catching. So you need to be really good at the rules of composition. So that means thinking about lead-in lines like we've got here. That means thinking about things like rule of thirds and foreground interest. All of these simple tricks will make your images much more dramatic. So let's try a different angle for my camera. Let's try shooting down low and see how that changes the shot. So one of the reasons I like to use a tripod when I'm shooting black and white is because composition is so important and this thing slows you down. It means that you spend a little bit longer thinking about the composition and trying to find the best you can in the environment that you have available to you when you're taking the picture. So I've just moved a few feet, just not far up the track here, and I've got this nice little bit of uh, mud down here and hopefully that should work nicely in the foreground for this shot. I'm still using my polarizing filter to make that sky really nice dark and blue. Let's just frame everything up. And if you get lucky, occasionally you find there's a horse coming towards you as well. And it's just things like that that are just a bit of luck really, but hey, there you go. 
And as you can see, that has a great foreground interest and gives a wonderful alternative to the standard five foot six, in my case, view with a, a normal viewing height. So just trying to find a different angle will make your black and white pictures really stand out. So let's go right back to the beginning, the very first picture that I photographed, the windmill. Now, normally at this stage, I would say, well, this is exactly what came off the camera. But as you saw in the video, it's not because the back of the camera showed a black and white image, but here in RAW, it's back to being a color image again. Remember, the back of the camera shows you a JPEG version of your RAW file, and that includes the picture style that I chose. Now, incidentally, if you use the camera manufacturer's own software, the chances are it'll honor that black and white setting, although you should be able to change it. And of course, it's worth testing your camera to make sure that when you bring your images into Photoshop or into Lightroom, they do indeed come back as color before you go out and do a shoot. OK, so what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to do things that you might not expect to make a black and white picture just on my RAW, because although there are many, many ways you can make a black and white image in Photoshop, I'm going to start by processing a color version in RAW. So let's do the white balance first and well, have a look and see why. Notice the, the mud here, the driveway is a bit of a gray color. But if I change to the cloudy white balance, now there's tone and color in there. And I can leverage that to pull out some of the colors later on when we're inside of Photoshop, because there's a, a hint of red. Now I'm also going to come down here and tweak things like the highlights to try and recover some sky. That looks pretty good. And we're going to change things like, well, a bit of clarity, of course, just to put a bit more punch in there and a bit of vibrance to really make these colors strong. I'm not making a color image. I'm making a color image that has lots of different colors that I can then change into black and white. So ignore the look of this because it's going to get worse. I'm actually going to get the adjustment brush and the temperature and tint. I'm going to make sure they're both on maximum. And this is a new feature in Photoshop CS6. So if you're on an older version of Photoshop, don't look for this. You won't find it. And of course, it's in Lightroom 4 as well. I'm also going to make sure that auto mask is turned on and I want to make this a lot stronger color than it was when I photographed it. I'm going to give it a bit of a paint job and I'm just going to warm it up into a sort of red tone. And the reason I've done that is now it's a very different color to the background. And we'll just do the path or the driveway here as well. And again, I'm not looking to make this as a color image. I'm just looking to say what I want in my picture is different colors that I can then make the, the red bits brighter or darker and the green bits brighter or darker. OK, I'm kind of happy with that, but it's worth checking something. Go in really close, have an extremely close look. Look for things like this chromatic aberration. With all of the changes I've made, especially the strong vibrance, you will see any minor chromatic aberration become quite major. So I'm just going to jump across to the lens correction, turn on remove chromatic aberration and increase the amount of defringing until it goes. OK, we'll open up the image and we'll leave raw behind and we'll bring our rather strong coloured image back into Photoshop. Now, because I like to work non-destructively, I'm going to go up to layer and down to a new adjustment layer and choose black and white. As I say, there are so many black and white methods in Photoshop. This is just one that works for me with this picture. You may find there are other methods that work for you with other pictures. Now, I could use the presets and these are great. There's a blue and green, just like filters I used to put on my camera many years ago. I actually like the infrared preset as a starting point because that's a nice effect I like to reproduce. I'm going to bring the yellows down because it's lost a lot of detail in those highlights and we'll tweak it in a minute. But here's how I use the sliders here in black and white. Remember, we went to the trouble of making this windmill sort of a, an orangey red and the driveway an orangey red. Well, if I just move the red sliders, notice that those are the only bits of the picture that change their brightness and darkness settings. And I reckon we want to be down there somewhere. Yellows we know is the grass. I think I can bring that up a little bit and also the trees. Greens, surprisingly, there's very little actual green in this picture, despite how it looked in color. So we'll put it up to maximum. Cyans and blues, that's going to be the sky. Now, had I been using my polarizing filter, I'd have had even more strength on that sky. But nonetheless, I'm going to get quite a dramatic sky. 
magentas. There were no magentas here, so I could, I could put that absolutely anywhere. It really won't matter. One last little thing is to, um, well, give this a sort of a soft glow. It fits in with the infrared idea. So let's go and make a, a copy of that layer. And then on that layer, I'm going to use a bit of blur and Gaussian blur. Do you notice that some of my filters are grayed out? I actually bought this image out of RAW as a 16-bit image. And that's important to maintain the quality. If you bring it out as an 8-bit and then start doing what I'm doing, you're going to find the quality drops off quite quickly. OK, so I've really blurred that up. And then I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light. And we'll drop the opacity down a little bit just so that has a soft glow and it also boosts the contrast. Final thing when you've done all of that is just to jump into levels, have a quick look at the levels. Everything looks pretty much OK. Little tweak here, little tweak there. You can even dodge and burn should you wish with the dodge and burn tools. But I'm happy with that. And there it is, my monochromatic picture completed. So there you go, there's how you can take and make great black and white photographs using your camera and Photoshop. Now, if you want to see more videos from, by me and other people here on Adorama TV, then don't forget to click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.